Well, hi everyone. Today, I just want to go over some beginning basics with you. One of my daughter's friends is hopefully getting a resin beginners kit for Christmas. And so I just want to put this together so that she can watch it and have some basic tips and guidelines and then share this with everyone else too. So the first thing I want to talk about is safety, of course, always safety. So the first thing we always talk about with safety is the fumes from the resin. So a respirator is a very, very good thing to have. This will protect your lungs, especially in young people when they're still developing. They really should wear a good respirator. I will include a link to this and to everything else that I show here today. Now, if you choose not to wear a respirator, please, please work in a very well ventilated area. Have the windows open, a fan blowing the fumes out of the room. Wear gloves. These are my gloves. You can use them over and over. I have worn these gloves in at least 14 different projects. They're starting to get pretty used up at this point. The fingers are starting to get kind of stiff. But when I'm done with my project, I just wipe off the fingers with a sanitizing wipe. And then they're good to go for the next time. Otherwise, the, the fingers will stick together anywhere you have resin. So you got to wear your gloves because resin burns suck. Now, there are some resins that are better to use than others as far as safety. So the Let's Resin brand of resin is the resin that I have found has the lowest fumes and burning potential. Some resins I've gotten on my skin and they instantly cause a chemical burn. I've not actually gotten this brand on my skin yet. I've been very careful, but I do not detect any odor with it. So. I still would recommend wearing a mask, but it's one of the better resins as far as the fumes. Okay, the other super, super important thing, and I cannot emphasize this enough because I've had a fire, is a fire extinguisher. Do not have it right by your work surface. Have it at least six feet away. If you have it right by your work surface, and then you have a fire at your work surface, you cannot get to your fire extinguisher. Very, very important. Okay, some handy things to have is we need to protect our work surface. So we, I do that with silicone mats because once your resin dries on a silicone mat, you can just pop it off of here. You can just peel it right off. If if it's still in its separate parts, part A, part B, you can wipe it right up with a Clorox disinfecting wipe. That'll just clean it right up. If you think you're going to be super careful and not spill, I guarantee you, you are wrong. This is my work surface. It is full of spills and stuck on things and stuff under here. It's a mess and I cleaned it right before my last project. So you will make a mess. If you don't have the silicone mats, and you probably won't when you're first starting out, a couple of layers of garbage bag or something like that'll work. If you try to use like a, one of those white cutting boards and you get resin dried on there, you will never get it off. If you get it on your table or your counter and you let it dry on there, you will never ever get it off. For your resin to set up properly, you need to be working in a temperature controlled room. If you're working at 60 degrees, your resin is not going to cure properly. An ideal temperature is between 68 and 72 degrees. One of the things that we can do if our room is not quite warm enough is we use a warm water bath. See, I've just got some warm water in there to warm our resin and that's always a good idea to warm our resin first 
because it will help get any bubbles out of our finished product. So after we measure our resin out into our cups, so we're going to pour part A and part B out into our cups. Let's see, this is part A, and I'm going to pour out two ounces. And you want to measure super carefully. It's really, really important. Some people even weigh their resin, and that works very well too. If you don't measure carefully, you could end up with a sticky mess at the end. You also want to pay attention to whether your resin is a one-to-one -one mixture or a one-to-two mixture. So read the directions. Okay, so I have two ounces of part A and two ounces of part B. Now I'm going to put it in my warm water bath once I get the lid on. And your warm water should just be warm to the touch. It should never be hot. If it's too hot, then it will overheat your resin and your resin will set up way too fast. And you want to make sure the water is not so deep that it makes your cups float. Just have them sit in there and warm up for 10 minutes or so. So while that's warming, let's just talk about our molds for a minute. I'm just going to use little coaster molds and you want to make sure that your molds are very clean inside. If there's any kind of just little fuzzies or residues, a piece of tape will just pull it right out. Okay. Make sure you have your dyes and every, whatever you're going to put in there ready before you pour your resin. All right, while you're waiting for your resin to warm up, a lot of these dyes, they have to be shaken. And when you first go to open them, this little tip is not going to actually let the dye come out. You have to take a pin and open up that hole. I'm going to just do four coasters here, and I'm going to do them in red and white since Valentine's Day is coming. And I didn't make up a lot of resin here, so I don't know that it's going to do all four of these, but you always want to have enough molds ready. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on and get ready to start mixing the resin. And pull them out of the water bath. And then let me move this out of the way here. I'm going to pour one cup into the other cup and use my tongue depressor to just get all the resin out of this cup that I'm pouring from. Then you're going to want to have some sort of a timer or a clock with a second hand near you because you want to time how long you're mixing for. You don't want to mix till it just seems like it's mixed. You want to mix for a full three to five minutes. So you see how it's kind of cloudy in there? You start mixing and you're just going to mix in one direction because we don't want to mix bubbles in here as we're mixing it. Once the bubbles get in there, they're hard to get out. So you just mix gently going in one direction and you see how it's still cloudy. You just keep mixing. That cloudiness will go away, but that does not mean it's mixed. You got to keep mixing, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom. So I've been mixing for one minute. You see how it's still kind of cloudy in there? Okay, so I've been mixing it for three minutes and it looks clear and it looks mixed, but I'm just going to keep mixing it for another minute 
because this is really key. If it's not mixed completely, you will ruin the whole project. So taking this extra minute is well worth it in the end. Okay, I cut out part of my mixing so that you didn't have to watch that whole thing. And now we're gonna pull this back into camera. And I'm just gonna do a very, very simple pour because we're not trying to do anything fancy today. Just go through some of the basics. Okay, so I'm wiping the worst of this off of here. Now this is one of the joys of a silicone mat is I can lay it down here and I'll be able to pick it up later, no problem. Most of your resins will have a 20 to 40 minute working time from the time you start mixing it. Now there are some bubbles in here, some micro bubbles, but we're just gonna go ahead and pour it in And it's best if you don't overflow your mold because then you've got edge mess to clean up. Oh, I didn't quite have enough for the third one. And I'm not gonna scrape the bottom and the sides of my mixing cup because there can be some unmixed resin in the bottom there. Now, we could have some micro bubbles in there and we wanna make sure we get the micro bubbles or larger bubbles out of our work. So one of the easiest things that you can do is use your breath. So our breath will help pop the bubbles if you can get right down here and just huff on it. That can pop some bubbles. Or you can use a straw and blow through the straw. Just be very, very careful that no moisture comes through the straw and dribbles on it. But other ways that you can do this are you can use a barbecue lighter, but you want to use the heat from the bottom of the flame and you have to be very, very careful not to melt your mold. Uh, except my lighter is not going to work. But you would just run it over here very, very carefully. Uh, but you do want to be careful because sometimes these are flammable, especially your alcohol inks. If you use a lot of alcohol ink, they're flammable. And another way we can get rid of bubbles is using an alcohol spritz. So I've just put 90% rubbing alcohol in a spritz bottle. Here's the big, big thing. If you spritz them with alcohol, never ever use a flame on them you'll start a fire. How do I know that? I learned it the hard way. And look at what alcohol can do if you spritz it on your colors. It just moves everything. Sometimes the look ends up really cool. Sometimes you won't like it. Another thing you can do to get rid of bubbles is you can use a low temp heat gun and just blow on it very gently, but the heat gun will also move everything. So you, you're gonna wanna experiment with different ways to get rid of the bubbles. The easiest way is a flame, just from a lighter, not a regular lighter, but you know, your barbecue lighter. And like I said, just use the heat where it comes off the bottom of the flame, but never too close to the edges of the mold. So the other really important thing is when you're all done and it's time for it to cure now, you wanna cover your work. You want to cover it so that nothing blows into it, lint or pet hair or whatever. So you want to just cover it up with something like this to keep all that stuff off of it. And then here's the super hard part. You have to leave it alone. 
you have to leave it alone for 24 hours. Some resins cure in about eight hours, but don't come back in a couple of hours and stick your finger in it to see if it's done. You have to leave it alone. And you can read the bottle of resin to see what its cure time is, but most of them are eight to 24 hours before you can demold them. Even after you've demolded them though, they're usually not hard for several days. So it's gonna depend on the different resins, read your directions, and have fun. All right, bye-bye for now. All right, guys, so it's been an entire 24 hours, and it takes a lot of patience to wait this long, but it's really important to have your projects turn out well. Okay, so demolding your projects is the absolute most rewarding part of resin work because it always looks different from one side to the next. And you want to be very gentle with your molds because they do tear. Oh, look at that. That is so different on that side than that side. We'll just do these other two really quick. Now there is also, I'll just share this tip really quick. Um, there is a way to sand and polish resin but it takes a lot of practice and a lot of tools and uh, a lot of patience so one of the things that I have learned is if I did end up with a little dribble or whatever and resin tends to shrink as it cures so you end up with this little bit of concave edge I'm trying to catch that on the camera there we go. There you can see that little edge right there. So if you wanted to, you can just take a large emery board and just take that down a little bit. If you do too much, you're going to show a really rough, dull surface that then you'll have to polish. But if you just end up with a little dribble or something and it's making a sharp edge, just take it down with an emery board. So that's just some beginner tips, and it wasn't so much about the designs that we were doing or what we were pouring as how to be safe, what precautions to take, and how to have fun doing your resin, and how to be successful, because I want you all to be successful. So... I hope you came away with some good tips today. I wish you all the best of luck. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you all again, I hope. Bye-bye for now. And I can't seem to find the resin I want to talk about. Oh, here it is.